Okay, hello guys. Uh, today I'm gonna do a tutorial on uh, Unity and Mechanism, and uh, I'm also gonna show you guys. Uh, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to fix the problem with animation that has no loop motion or in-place animations. Uh, I'm, I'm also gonna be using Autodesk Maya to, for this tutorial. So uh, if you have one, uh, I recommend using it, and if you have something else similar. Uh, I'm sure you can apply the same technique to you know any other modeling uh, application. Okay, first I'm I'm gonna open up uh, Autodesk Maya, which I have up here, and then I'm gonna load uh, one of my animations that have like that have no root motion, like an in-place animation, and it's it's actually a run animation that I'm gonna open up. The purpose of this uh, tutorial is to show you guys how to add motion, add a, a root motion to your animation and then import it back to Unity so you can use it within your mechanism system. As we all know like the mechanism system does not uh, does not work well with animation that are in place and that have no uh, root motion at all. So I'm just going to open up my run forward animation. This is actually a, a file that I downloaded from Unity Store and I think it's a free download. So uh, if you feel like trying this out, you can go and download it and just watch the video again. And then fo just follow the steps. Okay, so what I have here is just like a basic character that has been rigged. Uh, well, it hasn't been rigged, but uh, actually has the animation, the run animation. And if I play it, you just have something like this. Actually, let me just adjust the frame. There. So, like, this is what you get just a basic run animation, and it's actually in place. As you can see, the character is not moving anywhere else, it's still in the exact same place. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you guys how to make this guy move without actually having to edit out the keys. Okay, uh, so first we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, this window, which I believe is the animation curve editor, I think, or maybe I'm just making it up myself. But uh, if you're running any like 2012 or 2011 version of Maya, it should have it at least, I think. So uh, it's just this little box here. It's actually called the graph, the graph editor. There we go. Yeah. So basically, I, I have selected my root bones from my uh, skeleton, and as you can see, you can see like uh, a bunch of curves and lines. Uh, basically, this represents like you know uh, all the keyframes and the position, rotation, scale, the scale of the actual model in a particular time on the frame. So what we're going to focus on is the translation Z axis. This is for making a player, uh, a character move forward from one position to another. So the first thing I'm going to do is delete this, delete all the keyframes uh, within the thing, the line or the curve. But make sure to keep the the one from the starting position and one from the end position because you're probably going to need it. Uh, I actually never tried deleting everything, so I won't really bother going through it because uh, who knows my what what might happen. So the next thing is we want to do is we want to select the last curve, the last points on the, on the curve and then we'll click on this top part here. If you don't have it, uh, you, you can basically just select the point and press W for the move and then just drag the point up above to a, a specific value. Well like I'm just going to enter the, the code, the number here. So I'm just going to say uh, 169. Uh, the only reason why I chose this number is because I already done this before, so like I'm just redoing it again, so I know exactly what's gonna happen. Okay. So I just say one six nine. Actually, I just want to make it one five nine. Okay. Now, um, here's a little problem. If you have a, a character that has extra bones that are not attached to the root bones, you might want to, you know, just move those bone, uh, do the exact same thing to those bones that you don't you know that you don't at the moment so like for example this one here for the weapon here I can just select this and go to the translation Z and select the curve and delete all the points in between and then select the last point and just type in 
159 and let's frame that again and then you have something like this and then you just do the same for the last one as well Okay, now that I have everything like that done up, the next thing is, uh, well, I'm just going to play up, play the animation again just to show you exactly what I have done so far. I'm going to go back to the start. As we can see now, the character is no longer moving in one place. It's like moving from like point A to point B. Like this is exactly what we want for the mechanism system to work properly. So once you have this done, the next thing to do is select your skeleton mesh and go down to edit and go to keys and select big simulation and uh, we're just going to use the default settings so you don't have to make any changes and then once you have that done you just press bake so what what this does is uh, it add it adds uh, the keyframes back to the curve you, if you remember the keyframe that we deleted earlier it puts it back into the curve so that like uh, the animation runs back like normally with the rest of them as well so I'm just gonna do that do that for exactly for the weapon as well because uh, they actually are a separate uh, separate bone so I'm just gonna do the exact same thing I'm gonna, and I'm gonna select this guy here and I'm gonna bake this one as well Okay, so now uh, once you have all this done, what you what you want to do next is actually export your file as an FBX, or you can just leave it as a Maya file and then just save it like that. But like I'm just gonna export mine as an FBX, and if you don't trust me, you can actually just do what I'm doing as well, just export it as an FBX. So I'm just gonna call this as Run Animation. I'm just going to use the Autodesk Motion Builder as setup. You can use whatever you want. You can use your own. Uh, like this, this is m the one that I've made myself, and this is like you know the built-in one. So I'm just going to use the Motion Builder one, and I'm actually I have the FBX uh, version, uh, 2013 version. So like, it doesn't matter which version you have, it's still going to do the exact same thing. So just export it out. Okay, now if you get this warning here, you don't really need to concern yourself with it. It's just something to do with the FBX importer and exporters, or like it doesn't really make any changes to your model or to your animation to or anything like that. It just says like you know it did convert something to a different value and then blah 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 stuff like that. You don't really need to concern about it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to Unity. I'm using Unity 4, so I'm guessing everybody's using Unity 4 since it, that's the only one that has the mechanism and, and the animator uh, graph on it. So, what I'm going to do next is import my file. Where is it? Run animation. I'm just going to import it here. It doesn't really matter, just for the sake of um, the tutorial, I'm just going to import everything here. Like, Okay, so. The next step is to preview your animation first, just to make sure that the animation uh, animation is actually there. So uh, if you if you look on the expect if you select your model and look on the inspector, you see uh, the three tabs that says model rig and animation. Just click on the animations section and then scroll all the way down. Just like you see all these parameter here, you don't really need to concern yourself with it at the moment. So what I'm gonna do next is just play it to test my animation. So when I play my animation, I can see like you know I have this animation running, and when I press loop, when I put loop, you see it's just in place. So like we don't really need to worry about that. So I'm just gonna re revert it back to the way it was. Now next we want to do is we want we want to add a control rig to our animation. So I'm just gonna click back on the rig tab on the inspector and down the bottom you see the animation type it's generics so we want to change that to humanoid because that's what the mechanism use so once you, once you change that to humanoid uh, uh, click apply 
Okay. This uh, there's another step that you need to concern yourself with. If your character has like more uh, bones than it necessarily that it, that it really then it really don't like it needs to be like then uh, you can actually click on config config or configure sorry just press save there as well so what you, what you want to do here is you want to make sure that all your bones are properly mapped like uh, as we can see this guy has like loads of bones that uh, unity doesn't really need for humanoid and like human uh, unity like by default you just map the closest one that I can find but for some reason on my character here it didn't map the hip it, instead of mapping the hip it actually mapped the reference the reference bone instead so like what I, what I want to do is uh, make sure that the hip is mapped to the hip and everything else mapped to everything else so I'm just going to select the hip from the hierarchy and I want to drag it to my hip uh, connector here and once I have that done once I have that done, uh, then I can just click apply. And the main reason about uh, the main reason for uh, having the hip there is because if your hip is not properly mapped, then the ad the animation the character will not work properly at all. The anim like the character will not move forward. It's like if the hip is static, then the character cannot move anywhere else. So you have to make sure that the, the hip is properly mapped on the rig. Once you have that done, just press done, and then we'll go back to uh, if your character is not selected again, select your character again. Then this time we'll go back to our animation uh, tab again and click on our animation. Now, when you scroll down, you see all these lights you see green lights, and then you see a red light. Now, I want you to focus on this red light the root transform, uh, transform position. We want this light to be red because we want our character not to be in one position. We want them to be like moving forward. So you have to make sure that this light is not green. If this light is green, then you might want to go and edit your animation again and import it back again and make sure that this light is red. And you also want to check the average velocity values. You have to make sure that your Z values are above zero, above point zero. If it is above one zero, then there actually is some motion moving, but it has to be at least like at least one or two. That way, like there, there is a proper force being applied uh, for the Z axis. So you also have to make sure that that is that. Once you have that done, next thing you want to do is uh, click on the loop pose because we want our animation to loop over and over again. And then once we have that done, we just click apply, and then we test our animation again and as you can see now the character is moving forward and like you know everything is mapped properly don't mind the gun there that's just like a spare bones it's not pop it's not even mapped at all so you don't have to worry about that but like once we have this done then that's perfect now we, we, we can go to our animator which is our mechanism system and I'm just gonna go back to the uh, base uh, layer. You don't have to concern yourself with what I have so far because I have like loads of animation, like the idols. I have like loads of idol animation, like circulating, like you know, looping between each other. And then I have like other animation that are linked to those uh, animation as well. So we're just gonna focus on the locomotion, which is the road animation. Now. Uh, once I have this, like I have a blend tree here, which is kind of blend between a uh, strafing left and right, and then running forward as well. So I'm just gonna go back to my character that I just uh, previously edited, and then I'm gonna take that animation. So I'm gonna take that animation, and I'm gonna apply it at the center parts because that's when we're moving forward. That's my bad. Oh, sorry. Uh, Okay, once I have that done, right now I can test it, test the animation inside my character. Like I already have my character set up uh, using the, you know, the animator and also using the the animator control, the avatar controller and, and everything, and the animator controller as well. So if you don't have that set up, you can set it up. But like I don't like this tutorial is not really based on setting up the animator controller and all that stuff. So. 
what just happened Oops. yeah my screen record is kind of slowing down my PC sorry about that so uh, I have I have everything mapped and I have my animator set up so that I'm gonna test my animation let me just move back, move back, move back. okay I want you to focus on this one here I'm gonna test it on, on the game view so you can see exactly what I mean Okay, uh, so that's a, that's my character at the moment. He's just doing uh, an idle animation, like there's about three idle animation that you can do, and that's fine. Like we don't really need any more uh, any movement with the idle animation apart from the actual top part, top part of the body. So I'm gonna test out uh, my run animation first, then I'm gonna test out my other animations to, to show you like the difference. So I'm gonna start running, and as you can see. I'm actually moving now but like I have other animation like walk back which does not have any motion in, or any velocity on it so if I play the walk back you can see the character still in one place because like there's no motion there's no velocity in that in that uh, animation but like when I do the run again there he start moving again so that's what we want like stop that so basically that's the step you need to take if you want to uh, if you already have like animation done and you don't want to redo it again and if you want to apply like velocity into it so just do the step that I, I showed you and uh, it should work fine for you as well if it doesn't work just leave me a comment below and just tell me exactly what's going on and then I'll try my best to do another tutorial on it and just explain to you how to properly do it again okay Thank you for watching and I hope this helps you out a little bit.